Waka Waka. Who wants to hear a funny ass joke? Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. This episode is brought to you by Blowing Rock Brewing Company. Go to the mountains. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, a professional artist and educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content and videos. Is this a school project? As always, I appreciate the likes, shares, and new subscribers. And remember, it's always free. Everybody knows that. So in a couple separate videos, I've made references to Jan Van Eyck's wedding portrait, or Arnolfini portrait, from 1434. A Honestly, it's a Renaissance masterpiece that, of course, I'm going to include in a couple separate videos several videos because it's just so uh i mean it's iconic um and so i feel like this work needs its own separate video and this is that video there was a time that reading a painting was just like reading a book but just like any literacy it was something that had to be learned with some training and close observations in art history, we can better learn how to read these great artworks once again. Here's a prime example. This painting was done by Jan van Eyck early in the Renaissance of 1434. As we examine the painting, it looks like nothing special, just a regular portrait of a wedding. Through observation, we can better understand what their story is. For example, they are not yet married. We know that because of the cut and the color of the dress and the white veil. The green dress and white veil are just like an engagement ring. These are symbols to prospective suitors that somebody has taken. So this is more of an engagement portrait than a wedding portrait. Another side note on her is her hairstyle. Most people might not look at her hair that closely, but really look at it. Look how high her hairline is. It's well behind the veil. Why is that? At this time in history, the wisest of people were the older men, so a receding hairline was associated with a level of intelligence. Because this is not a problem for some women, they would shave their hair back so as to give themselves the appearance of a receding hairline and thus more intelligent. There are many, many examples of Renaissance paintings that include female portraits with exaggeratedly high hairlines, and that's why. And now you know. And no one is half the battle. They're committing themselves in a very holy sort of way. We know that this is a sacred event because both of them have their shoes placed on the floor. Behind them we see the rosary and above them a chandelier with a single lit candle. This signifies their belief of monotheism and their beliefs as Christians. Another symbol of their religious beliefs is the domed mirror in the back of the room. The carvings around the mirror pay tribute to Jesus. Strangely enough, right above that mirror is where Jan van Eyck signs his name. It was not fashionable just to put a signature in the corner of a painting when finished, because where in the world do you ever just see a floating name? So Jan van Eyck writes his name in the back like graffiti in the German text that reads, Jan van Eyck was here 1434. We know that they eventually want to have children. Many people think that it's because she has her hand on her belly, but that's not the case at all. It's actually the bedpost. The carving on the bedpost is a Venus figure, a patron saint of fertility. We understand that they each have a place or a role in their relationship. His role is making money. This is signified by the fruit. Fresh produce wasn't something that was easy to come by in the 1400s. These fruits on the windowsill and table signify that they are very wealthy individuals. Her job is to take care of the family at home. This is signified by the house to her back, but also the bed. Are you kidding me? This is before the time of political correctness or any form of a women's liberation movement. And distinctly at their feet is also a dog. The dog stands between them, a symbol that they are loyal to one another. Dogs have been an icon of loyalty since the Renaissance, when this painting was created. Amazing, you figured this all out already. Maybe I'm drunk, but man, I love that story. It's so good. <laughs> 
Just kidding. Yeah, it's about right.